1920 will do their clip on their platform, we will then uh, advance that and amplify it on our social media platform, and it just gives you tremendous reach. Okay. So. First question, man. Uh, welcome to Pace. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> um, let's talk about what happened up in Charlottesville, Charlottesville, Virginia. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I learned of the events in Charlottesville when I was in Israel, and I had just stepped out of a meeting with the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority where we were condemning the Palestinian Authority for the incitement of violence in their schools and among their young people. And so to see in the United States of America people waving the Nazi flag, attacking their fellow Americans. It was deeply troubling to me. It was sad, and we have to condemn as loudly as possible this theory that by virtue of the color of one's skin or one's background, somehow you're better than anyone else. It is un-American, and I condemn it unequivocally. What's your thoughts on what uh, President Trump had to say in his comments yesterday in the year? Well, I'm grateful that President Trump has called for national unity to uh, go against this uh, this extremism that we see in our society. So I'm grateful that you know he's been a voice to say that we ought to all stand up against this. It's wrong. It's inappropriate, and that's really the role of a president. I'm grateful for his leadership. What uh, something about the municipalities? What are your thoughts on about them removing the, the statues? The uh Confederate statues in each of these outside. Do you think it should be theirs to remove them, or should it be a federal thing? Or what, what's your thoughts? Well, I oppose the whitewashing of American history. I mean, what are we going to do? Go back and relitigate John Smith and Pocahontas? I mean, throughout America's history, there have been atrocities. There have been things that we're not proud of. The Civil War was a horrible thing. Tens of thousands of Americans died. But the theory that we can go and rip up our monuments, that we can uh, pretend that history didn't happen, is to me just uh, idiotic. I completely oppose that. I think that we've got to put history in context. We have to move forward from our history. But I, I don't support these efforts to go and rip down any uh, recognition that you know we had a civil war and that there were people on both sides of that war who uh, were our neighbors, who were people who lived in our communities and who were Americans. So Mayor Hayward just this morning told us that he wants the uh, Lee Square Memorial on top of uh, Gage Hill on Palafox to come down. Mm -hmm. And he said because it's a symbol of, you know, the bad history, bigotry, racism, and disinclusion for people. Um, a moment ago you said it's idiotic to pull things like that down. What would your response be to his, uh, you know, favoring that? Yeah, I disagree with the position of Mayor Hayward that somehow in Pensacola we can bleach Confederate history out of who we are. I mean, we're we're the city of uh, our multiple flags, and one of those flags was the Confederacy. And while that's not something that we would go back to, it's certainly something that's a part of who we are. And I do not support this bleaching of Confederate history. I mean, what's next? Are we going to go, you know, take down the Jefferson Memorial because Jefferson was a slave owner? I think we've got to acknowledge that our history exists in context. And if we don't remember our history, well, that's how we're most likely to repeat it. And so I don't support uh, the effort of Mayor Hayward to take down Confederate symbols or monuments in our community. I was a member of the state legislature that voted against uh, taking General Kirby Smith out of the U.S. Capitol. Uh, and I think that as a community, we ought to come together and acknowledge that as a country, our story isn't perfect. There have been flaws in the American experience, but it's still the greatest experience in all of human history, and it's one that I think we've got to put in proper context. Tell us about your trip to Israel. What did you learn over there? It's a big, big voyage for you to go over there for what, two weeks? Sure. Well, you know, when things are less safe in the world, it's very significant in Northwest Florida because it's our friends and neighbors who have to go downrange and fight when the world is not a safe place. And right now, the Middle East is a powder keg. We're fighting against ISIS extremism. We're fighting against a climate, particularly with the Palestinian Authority, that allows incitement. You know, I pressured the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority on the notion that they put a character called Maya the Martyr in their textbooks. They actually name their schools after terrorists. We're here today at Pace High School, the Pace Patriots, where we celebrate the exceptionalism and the greatness of America and our commitment to liberty and the individual and democracy. And to see that there are still places in the world where we glorify terrorism, it's abhorrent and we have to speak out against it. 
Yeah, just talk about that. We're at a, school, a pace of patriots, and we're talking about history, and they're tearing down monuments and stuff like that. You know, we got George Washington Hall here, Independence Hall, and you're seeing this. It, 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 what's your thoughts on that? We're, it, it's, these students are seeing this. Well, you know, we're here at Pace High School, and where we celebrate our founding fathers. I'll be teaching in a class later today about Madison and Jefferson and these principles that are unique in the entire human experience of liberty and the individual. That bears stark contrast to what we saw in Charlottesville. The groups that were uh, violent in Charlottesville, they don't believe in the individual. They fight against an individual's right to exist if that's not someone who is homogenized to their particular viewpoint. And so uh, the history and the teachings of government here in Pace High School, those are the ones to be proud of, to amplify, and that's really the story of America, people coming together for liberty and freedom. And were our founding fathers perfect? Of course not. We had founding fathers who were slave owners, who, who engaged in bad uh, personal behavior. But I think as a country, we've grown, and I think that the principles of liberty and freedom are enduring, and they are the winning principles to ultimately have a safer world. One question off the subject. We hear that you might be running for attorney general. Is that uh, something that you want to talk about? Look, I'm only <laughs> focused on my work as a member of the United States Congress for the 1st Congressional District. I think that one of the sad things about politics is that when someone gets elected to something, they're already looking at the next office. My job is to fight for constitutional principles on behalf of the people of Florida's 1st Congressional District, and that is what I do every day. No, I'm good. Uh, I've Thanks. got one, but it's sure. not really related. Okay. Um, okay, so, you know, we've been doing quite a bit of coverage of the fee simple bill. It's made it through, through the House, yes. through all that fun stuff. But I was looking back through um, the, the language of the bill, and there was something in particular that's kind of caught my attention, um, specifically the preservation clause not applying to Santa Rosa County. Um, as I understand it, that's because of the past. Are you concerned that with the wording of the bill, we might be putting some of our public access and conservation lands in jeopardy? No, look, I believe in conservation. I believe that our beaches are public assets that we've got to be able to protect. Uh, we put the authority for what's going to happen in our public spaces in the hands of our very capable partners in local government. I don't think that Washington ought to be dictating the terms of, converse, of conservation to Santa Rosa County. I want the local elected leaders in Santa Rosa County making those decisions. Fortunately, with our county commissioners, there is a real belief that we've got to preserve Navarre Beach's uh, public access so that folks throughout our region can enjoy just this, uh, this great gem that we have in the coastline in Northwest Florida. So you don't, have, you don't have any concerns that we'll lose the conservation spaces? No, I have no concern. We also have the National Seashore, which in, requires conservation over our barrier islands that include areas of Navarre Beach. And so there is no world in which we will see uh, any type of blocking of the public's access to our public beaches. Uh, our partners in local government have made that commitment. Now, I, I do believe in a Navarre Pass. I am an advocate for the Navarre Pass. I believe that it would bring a billion dollars in investment to South Santa Rosa County. That would be high water that would raise uh, all the boats throughout our economy in the region. But right now, we cannot have a pass because there is conflict with the military mission. Mm -hmm. And so until we create military capabilities that can replicate those that exist now out on Navarre Beach, uh, we've got to temporarily pause our ambitions for a pass and really focus on the military mission. Are you worried with moving those capabilities to other areas on the Gulf Test Range? Um, are you concerned that that might be have an economic impact to our area, considering that that would mean that those military people would no longer be centered here? Well, there are places in northwest Florida where we can replicate some of the testing and evaluation mission that happens in Navarre Beach. For example, on Okaloosa Island, we have a large swath of land that is not currently making a contribution to the test and evaluation mission. It's used for training, and I think that if we're able to pass some of the legislation that I've sponsored to have more capabilities in the Gulf test range, then we'll be able to greater leverage some of the other uh, littoral training and littoral testing assets that we have right here in Northwest Florida. All right, and my last question about the, uh, the fee simple and the pass mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, obviously, it's gone on to the Senate. We mm -hmm. have pretty good support in the Senate with, from both Marco and um, a bill. Uh, if for some reason due to the preservation clause basically not applying to Santa Rosa, it came back to the House with amendment, 
would you be willing to negotiate that, or has it got to go through the way it is? Well, this has really been a team effort. The legislation was drafted not by a bunch of people in Washington, but in concert with our local county commissions. And both the Santa Rosa and Escambia County commissioners had a very active role in drafting this legislation. Both of those county commissions have unanimously passed resolutions of support. Uh, both Senator Nelson and Senator Rubio have sponsored this legislation in its current form. And so if there were to be any change, I wouldn't want to unilaterally speak to its uh, acceptability. I would want to include all of the members of the team who've been a part of getting us to this point. Very cool. All right, just, and my last... Can I oh, just clear... Yeah, it's, it's a point sure. of clarification on that. Um, we talked to Sam Parker about this, and he said roughly what you said, but I want to make sure that you have the same perspective. The reason for the distinction between Escambia County being preserved as is and Santa Rosa County having that exclusion that she mentioned, that's to make possible the Navarre Pass in the future, period. That's all that's for? Correct. Okay. And the last thing, it's totally unrelated. Um, you know, how great is it to see kids getting involved in politics? Um, well, maybe not super young, but I mean, in high school, seeing them engaged and asking questions and wanting to know more. Well, uh, if there is great hope for this country, it lies in the generations that are coming through high school now and have a real enhanced sense of civic service. Uh, these young people, they care about the direction of the country. They care about outcomes throughout the world. This is the most socially interconnected generation that has existed in all of human history. And that provides great opportunities for problem solving. Now, I work with a lot of people who are way older than me in Congress. I'm the third youngest member. And so for me, it's kind of exciting to be the oldest guy in the room with some <laughs> high school kids. But it also inspires me that there's a greater ethic for problem solving in the generation that's go. coming now. Okay. Okay. Come this way.